Hello and thank you. First thing I would like to do is thank you all for watching this my, this first video of mine. I am pure. I am pure plays games, and I this has long been a dream of mine to just play games I enjoy on YouTube, and I hope that you all can enjoy it too. And the first game I decided to play was a game that I've always been super comfortable with ever since I first touch it. Have touched it, which is Sonic Adventure One. Well, the the DX version technically, and as you can tell by that obnoxious blue border around it. It is also the PS3 version, and, well, ju uh, just for starters, I'm going to shut up while it plays the opening FMV. Now I will admit I am a huge Sonic fan and most of my love for this game is absolute biased, but by, but nostalgia is a, is a uh, everlasting demon, so I just hope to play through this game and I hope you all enjoy, and as you can tell I have uh, save files already, and this is post commentary as in I've already played through the game and beaten it, just so I can make sure it's as efficient as possible and so I can cut out load times. Now of course we're going to start out with the blue blur himself, Sonic. And just to give a little backstory, the reason this was pr the second Sonic game that I really played into and really enjoyed. Now, originally, because I'm a 1997 baby, I grew up on a Sega Saturn. I was one of those rare ch children. And, well, the first game I ever played, and pretty much the only game I ever had for it, was Sonic 3D Blast. And while that I know acknowledge now that, that was, isn't one of the best games to start out with, it oh, yeah! it was amazing to me this as a child, happening. and it certainly got me interested in Sonic. Uh -huh. And so, you know, when I eventually got the GameCube and was able to nab this game, I played it to my heart's content. I got 130 emblems. I what played the? through the mission mode, and I I cannot stop loving this game. And then, of course, I ended up getting a Genesis from a and from my cousin, and then I played through all the original games, and I've been a Sonic fan ever since. Been through the, all the struggles, have pretty much all the games, and I, I, I've been disappointed a couple times, obviously, but that's, I'll cover those games when I get to them. Anyway, first, first things first, a blob monster is attacking the the, uh, the ma main hall, I think it is. I've always forgotten what this place is. Never really paid attention to the cutscenes after the first couple of playthroughs. Oh no, this is one of the few times I had to play through the game without skipping over them because you know can't skip over cutscenes in a let's play. Oh yeah, this could be fun. No. To people who are unfamiliar with Sonic's character, he's always been the reckless uh, night, based around the 90s, of course, with the whole radical and you know just in general like feel of it. Uh, he's he's definitely evolved over time, but this is the more uh, this is certainly the the adventure seeking hedgehog that that, that the originals were kind of kind of hinting at. And well, let me just elaborate on what the controls are. This uh, for the PlayStation controller, the square button is for the spin dash, which you can look, uh, charge up to go faster. 
the end when he curls up the ball, and that's what that is. The, the hey, uh, play with you homing attack, which he keeps using, to, which I keep using to attack the head, is t uh, double t tapping the X button. Every time you jump, you press that, and you'll home in on the nearest enemy. Basically, he's always attacked using a jump attack, so the homing attack has been the best way to make sure that he's able, always able to attack things in a 3D plane, since this was his first on, 3D, a full, full 3D going? incarnation, not counting 3D blast. Now, I will admit this game has not aged well over the over the decade. It you know neither has its fool. sequel, Sonic Adventure it's 2, chaos. but you know, the I can't help but love it. And here we are introduced <laughs> to the main villain, Dr. Robotnik, or as he is eventually switched to in this game, Dr. Eggman. In Japan he was always called Eggman in the United States. And uh, Europe, he was always referred to as Dr. Robotnik. Huh? And, you know, never really bothered me because I kind of grew up on that, but what? I still have a habit of s switching between the two. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! And the lip motions are certainly not what they used to be. Tails! You know, this game now, used to be impressive. What am I gonna do with you? And now we have all those Xbox 350s and uh, PS whatevers. And, well, I, uh, in general, I just hope to use this channel to play whatever game I want to and add my input on things. I, For a majority of games, I hope to do sort of a post-commentary, but for games that just have to like, have live commentary, which a game that I plan on putting a video on shortly after this will require, I plan to make those completely live commentary and make sure that the audio is all intact. And here we are at Emerald Coast. The music here can't get it, can't get enough of it. This, the entire soundtrack of this game is absolutely amazing. And you no, know, I always feel like the bright, lively look of this place is always fantastic. Here's a, uh, here's a moment that the Sonic franchise likes to keep bringing up with the killer whale chasing Sonic. Apparently, killer whales don't like blue hedgehogs. Some continuous thing that they keep bringing up throughout the games. It's always been trying to kill him, except you know, it's like Sonic Heroes. And if you may notice, I'm kind of dashing through the areas just because I... I know this game like the back of my hand at this point. And you know, for every play, and for every section that isn't one of some of the later sections of the game, I'll be, I'll be showing off how fast I can get through them. Simply because I can. And the, uh, the speed shoes upgrade, which, was, which has pretty much always been in there. Uh, it simply speeds them up, speeds up the music, and there's an extra life. The rings, well, if, if you're a Sonic fan, you'll know what those are, but basically as long as you have one, you take a hit, you're fine. You can collect extras, and I'll show what those are for, and that's a speed run, that's a quick speed running tip. Just jump off that ramp jump and end up on there. And these, these panels are simple to understand as well, all you have to do is press X to move to the next one. And for, for the enemies, which I'm mostly ignoring, all you have to do is be in a ball form of any sort to hit them. Either homing attack, jumping into them, spin dash, and this level is nearly complete. And at the end of each stage, you'll get the uh, time score, rings, enemy score, all that jazz. The points really don't matter unless you're going for some later missions, which even then they don't matter, but the uh, time and the ring count is yeah, things that are bad. important. As you can see, it says I completed level C. Level B and A are alternative missions that will show up later, which I might do in the future, hey, along with a possible playthrough of the huh? mission mode. I'm and here we are okay. uh, introduced to Sonic's, well, what par anyway? partner through most You're of the games, of Miles Tails like Per that. Hour, also known as no, simply that Tails. That was a test run using a new prototype propulsion system. It's got a few bugs to iron out. Why not just use my plane, the Tornado? Thanks, but you gotta check out my newest power supply. Ta-da! Whoa! A Chaos Emerald! Yep, I just happened to find one of the Southern Emeralds during one of my test flights. This thing's got unlimited power, you know. So I figured, why not use it to power my plane? Supercharged! 
You gotta come over to my workshop, Sonic. I've got something I've gotta show you. It's in the Mystic Ruins. The fastest way is by train. Let's go! And there, ladies and gentlemen, we've been introduced to the to the main uh, topic of most of the Sonic games, the Chaos Emeralds. There are set there are seven of them, and each and each time they're collected, bad things happen. The main villain always wants to go after them to cause problems the majority of the time, and Sonic can't have that. And Tails was smart enough to uh, try strapping it into a plane, hoping uh, having the equivalent of a nuclear reactor inside of your plane was a good idea. And here I'm going to go grab my first hidden emblem. There are a couple of these scattered throughout the world. I'm going to grab a majority of them, except for the ones I have to do po uh, post-game. Because I'm going to save those for some later playthrough, maybe, if, when I 100% the game. Which I really want to do at some point. And now we're in the Mystic Ruins, another hub world. And straight into <laughs> a Sonic. straight into a boss fight. Look, it's a giant talking egg. No. Eggman's always been a fantastic character, basically. He's in the world. Uh, I I I love his voice act the voice acting of him in this game. Uh, I, I can't get enough of it. Of course the current voice actor Mike Pollock is a fantastic fantastic voice for him, but he, he, I, I've pretty much loved every voice for him, not counting the cartoons. And of course, considering this is technically a kid's game, a lot of the lines will be pretty cheesy, but like, taken by force the hard way, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure taken by force is the hard way. You know. To make an end the vehicle he drives around is called the Eggmobile, and a majority of the times he's just gonna strap something onto it hoping to intimidate Sonic. In this case, he strapped a bunch of jet boosters and called it the Egg Hornet. Now, this is... Th this is a really simple boss. Basically, you just have to dodge the missiles, which you can do by running around in circles. He's gonna jump down, he's gonna charge, and then you can cheese him like this by repeatedly homing and attacking him. He's supposed to have three phases, and then, just because that's unfair, I'm going to do this to reset. No. Hey, I'll play with you some other. And right there, I just died in the load in the uh, completion screen. If you do that just right, you can complete the game and still die. Uh, as, and uh, well, while you're doing your dying animation, you complete the level and still have a count. But I wanted to do that just so I could show off the full boss fight without having quickly cheesed it. Now, each, he'll, set a, he'll shoot a different set of missiles each time. The first time he shoots, he shoots that first set of missiles. This time he's going to shoot the second pair, and so on. Really predictable. There's, this this guy's no big deal. He's just a pushover. All you got to do is dodge that homing attack straight to the cockpit. He's not going to get away with this. In all honesty, ever since there's been a 3D switch, Eggman hasn't been too much of a threat. He's... He... The, the, the theme of these 3D games is that he always gets overridden by something. There's always something that's a bigger villain than him. He's just kind of a villain a lot of the times, but you know, I'm not going to object to having more Eggman bosses. He's a great guy. Like that, the first boss is dead. And if you notice that ring counter at the end, those are basically rings you store at the end of each encounter or each level. And what and those will have a purpose later, which I will show off. Well, that wasn't and so hard. Tails does the dumb. It has the dumb idea oh, no! to walk towards him, holding the emerald out in plain sight instead of using the ass pocket that they have. Come on, Tails. Good. Because, you know, Chaos. something the size of like their head can just magically disappear and it implies that at several times they're able to carry seven of them at a time, so you know they gotta have a hammer space ass. Oh no, isn't that the same monster I saw the other day? And here's the main use of the Chaos Emeralds in this game. Feed it to the monster, monster oh, yes. grows bigger. Simple it's as that. <laughs> Ha 
strength increases every time. In this I case, you can cut a robotic move. arm, which, you know, With all seven emeralds in it, makes him look you'll really be lopsided. And work for me! Together, we'll destroy Station Square! Oh, I forgot to mention Station, station Square was the big city I'll area I was in. And his main drive is to build Robotnik city, Land, which, knowing him, all. will most likely be a Come casino. On, Let's find another emerald, shall we? We can't let him get away with this, can we? No way, Tails. Without more emeralds, oh, and also we canonically, can't Tails is like seven so years old. So to get the that's why his Apex voice does, is just huh? you know, whiny little brat. And so the first objective is to go up here and grab this green stone. But I want to go over there, spin, spin, uh, spin dash, and go up there. Now, normally, I would go try and get that as Tails, but I was just, like, this is my first time with experimenting with that, and it turned out I could easily do that, so, bringing Tails over there is now a waste of time. Now, these keystones, they're used several times in the games to unlock new areas. In this case, the Windstone unlocks the next level right here. Just gotta get it right in there, drop it, and it will event, it'll just float straight into the hole, and then send off to Windy Valley. Now I'm cutting out all the low times and the low times can get quite tedious, but the objective of this place is to go get to go get the emeralds. And this is a remix of a song from uh, Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, the Genesis version. Which, you know, I personally think has the best uh, soundtrack despite my bias towards the Saturn version. And, you know, pretty simple. A lot of uh, flying platforms, but well, bottomless pits aren't really your issue here. Platforming in this game is easy enough. Sonic has a really floaty jump, so that just only helps. And that bridge collapses, and the first thing that happens is you're sucked into a tornado. Now, you know, normally that'd be lethal, but for Sonic, he can platform inside of it. Hell yeah. So, logically, you'd want to get out, so just, you just get on panel number to the top. One. Those jump pad to things. And three. Oh, and those are checkpoints. They also show off your time in, se in seconds and tell you how long it took you to get there. Yeah. Don't really have to worry too much about falling back down. There's kind of a flip. There's a floating thing that holds you in there. And then you drop, drop straight back down into here, which is... This area is probably one of the most straightforward areas in the level. Which... Right here, you just kind of got to follow follow a path straight down. Now this is kind of a gimmick. Yeah, my camera got stuck under there. Uh, this is kind of a gimmick that they would bring back in later games to just tur turn him into. Uh, he, he would uh, get stuck on a path, and just uh, your only objective would be to straight left and right. But you know, this was before Sonic and the Secret Rings, and before Sonic Unleashed. So. It, it, it's it's all right. I don't mind those paths too much, but it, it, it's a bit tedious and feels like it's a time simple time consumer. And you can easily skip past that area by jumping over there, and you are and, and it saves you quite a bit of time. And from here on out, you just gotta run forward, and you will eventually make it to your destination. I personally think the atmosphere of this game of uh, this level is great. Uh, so something that really stands out now is draw distance, though, which, you know, is going to happen in a level with a scope like this. And then, just a quick couple loops, and then walk, walking along an invisible air path, and there's the Chaos Emerald. And, you know, I'm greedy, and I had to go for that one ring. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you will all return for part yeah, uh, for bad. part two of Sonic Adventure 1 DX. I appreciate your viewership and have a nice day.